everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by our own Gabe Morenci, who's got a six-pack of picks for you. Hopefully, they continue to be as hot as they have been. What's happening, Gabe? Well, let's crack the six-pack uh, open, uh, Greg. Last week, uh, we took Ditka's crew against the Norsemen, and we see no reason not to go back into the woods once again uh, this weekend as uh, both the Bears and the Raiders head overseas uh, second consecutive year that the Raiders play in London. It didn't end well for them last time. They lost 27 uh, to 3. I don't know what it is uh, with the Raider organization. The more things change, the more they stay the same as they've been uh, jumping from city to city in their entire franchise history. And they seem to like to hire coaches that hate to fly. Of course, John Madden famously traveled the country in his RV. Gruden hates flying. Hates flying. He flew to Belarus. Uh, for his son. You know, his son's a power lifter, right? Uh, he flew to Belarus for a power lifting uh, championship. Uh, he had vertigo for like a month after. No joke. Gruden uh, has already some problems, right? Gruden can't sleep as it is. He's got a lot of little quirks about him, and he hates flying. The overseas trips freak him out. They got tattooed last time. I see no reason it doesn't happen again. And oh, yeah, you know who's on the Chicago Bears? Khalil Mack. And oh, yeah. It's very refreshing that Khalil Mack's not saying that it's just another game, that he's saying, yes, I want to terrorize them. I'm out for revenge. I don't like the way that it was ha handled. And, yes, I have this game circled. If he has it circled, I have it circled as well. Hey, props to the Raiders for winning last week in Indy, but they're not covering two weeks uh, in a row on the road. They're 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last uh, 10 trips away from the black hole. And we'll wrap it up with this, guys. These London trips are interesting, and the better team generally wins. And when I say generally wins, like almost always wins. Uh, favorites are 24-1 and one against uh, uh, straight up. And against the spread, they're, they're pretty damn good uh, as well. We always talk about how if a team's going to win the game, they're probably going to cover the spread. Uh, so let's cash this. 18-7 and seven against the number, and the 25 trips favorites are to England. Let's make it 19-7 and seven as the Bears uh, get it done. And uh, the Bears cover the number. John Gruden hates flying. He's got these weird quirks, as Gabe says. He also doesn't love winning because he doesn't do it all that often. The Raiders not going to get the job done in London this weekend. Another one of Gabe's favorite bets is in regards to Teddy Roosevelt himself. Teddy Bridgewater. Gabe, you've been talking all week how this guy's a winner. He may not be flashy, but he has the Saints on his back winning football games. That'll be the case again this week. I think we're getting some value here with Teddy Bridgewater and the New Orleans Saints against the Tampa Bay Buccaneer team that everybody just saw hang 55 on the Rams. You know what else happened in that game? Uh, they also gave up 40 points. They also gave up over 500 yards uh, in passing. And uh, this is a trend uh, right now. And in fact, if you look at the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers on the season, they've given up 31 or more in three of the four football games uh, that they played. We saw Danny Dimes uh, light them up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, much will be discussed about Tampa Bay going into New Orleans uh, last year and winning. They were different teams. It was Drew Brees versus Ryan Fitzpatrick. And you think that the Saints don't remember that game uh, as well? If Drew Brees was the quarterback in this game, we'd probably be laying six and a half uh, seven points, if not at least a five and a half. We're getting value here. Say what you will about Teddy Bridgewater. We're not playing fantasy football. Uh, we're playing a reality football. And you know what? In reality, Teddy Bridgewater's got a better winning percentage than Drew Brees does. Now, 25 and seven, guys, straight up as a starter in the National Football League. I'm not getting in front of that. I like the New Orleans Saints. We'll lay the three points in this contest. Saints win and uh, go marching into the winner's circle once again. Jumping on the back of the New Orleans Saints has made us some money thus far this year. Let's keep going. Teddy Bridgewater's a winner, and so will the Saints this weekend. He's been all over Danny Dimes here this season over the first two games. Now the Giants are hosting the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins, Stephon Diggs, and Adam Thielen. A lot isn't right in that Minnesota locker room. Gabe, are you backing Daniel Jones again? Oh, I want to do it. Oh, I want to do it, Danny boy. Oh, Danny boy. Danny Dimes, the man. You know, uh, this is a stat from the Morency database. You know what Daniel Jones is? He's undefeated. He's 2-0 straight up, and ATS is a starter. That's right. He's covered both games that he's played in. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to have a small piece of the Giants uh, in my pocket on Sunday afternoon, but I'm going to give you the over of this football game. 
I always tell you about the Vikings dominance against non-division opponents. I really don't want to get in front of this. But at the same point in time, do you trust Kirk Cousins laying five and a half points? Uh, the good thing about uh, uh, freedom is you don't have to bet on uh, every side and uh, total. We can pick our spots, and we're picking the total in this football game. I do think the Minnesota Viking offense is going to get on track a little bit here. If you look, they put up 28 against the Atlanta Falcons. They put up 34 against the Raiders. The two games that they struggled in were road divisional tilts. And the truth be told, to Kirk Cousins' defense, a lot of quarterbacks struggle against uh, the Chicago Bears. Life's going to be easier. And it's good news, bad news for the Giants. Great news that Danny Dimes looks like the real deal, although this is going to be his first big test. Bad news is Saquon Barkley goes out as soon as uh, Danny Dimes arrives on the scene. Ogletree's uh, still hurt. Now Conley. Conley was a key part of their linebacker core. Linebacker core that, quite frankly, is not that good uh, to begin with. Dalvin Cook should have a pretty big day here. I expect the Vikings to get into the high 20s, but the New York football giants get uh, Golden Tate uh, back. And you know what? Golden Tate is a a veteran player. He's also a very good blocker as well. He just brings some physicality to the Giants' offense and some veteran presence into that huddle. I like the addition. I think they're going to go back and forth here. I'm not talking full track meet, but hey, 24-21 gets us the over. I'm going to give you the over in this game. I'll probably sprinkle on the Giants, but... Our official bet will be over 43 and a half. I think the number's just a little bit too low. We're getting value because uh, people are down on the Vikings offense right now. People have been all over the Vikings offense, Gabe, and that they don't throw the ball enough against this Giants defense that is certainly vulnerable to the pass. We expect Kirk Cousins to get it going with Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. We already know what Daniel Jones can do with the Giants. 24-21 is not a lot to ask for. Hopefully we get it on Sunday. If Captain Kirk doesn't, uh, get it done against the New York Giants. I tell you what, uh, the Vikings are going to beam him up to a place he doesn't want to be. <laughs> and the questions are really going to start to be asked. Massive game for Kirk Cousins uh, here. Uh, give me the over. Give us some points. Up next, game we go, well, of course, to Buffalo, where the Buffalo Bills are going up against the Tennessee Titans. Josh Allen's availability is still a question mark right now. You buying Matt Barkley? Uh, you know what? I'm going to uh, buy the total once again in this uh, football game. Although, I want to take the Buffalo Bills in this spot. If there's one thing we know about the Tennessee Titans is they're inconsistent and erratic. Every time you think Marcus Mariota has turned the corner, Marcus Mariota will have a, a subpar football game. Every time Marcus Mariota plays terrible, he plays great uh, the next game. They're very, you know, they're almost easy to figure out in a sense. We have some real data here between these two teams. All right, guys? Um, As they played last year, they played in 2015. I think they played in 2014 as well. Long story short, the last three times these uh, two teams have played, the games have been decided by exactly one point every time. Let's let's use last year as an example. 13-12. You know what the total was last year? 38 and a half. Exactly what the total is uh, here in this football game. 38 and a half is really low for 2019 in the modern National Football League. Uh, But generally, you'll make money if you bet the highest totals over and the lowest totals under. It's under for a reason. As I mentioned, it was 13-12 last year. They're pretty much the same football teams uh, for the most part. It doesn't really matter who the quarterback is for the Bills. Their offense won't be that much better or worse either way. And I tell you what, the Bills defense can stop anybody as we saw them shut down Tom Brady uh, last week. Sometimes, let's not overthink things, guys. The Buffalo Bills are 4-0 to the under on the season. The Tennessee Titans are 3-1 to the under on the season. They played last year, and it was 13-12. Uh, the time before that they played, you know what the score was? 14-13. Give me the under 38 and a half. Feels like the Ozmakers just giving away money here. This game always is under between these two teams. Buffalo and Tennessee certainly not known for their offense. This week, we expect it to be under once again. Tennessee's defense has been really good, too. Um, They're only giving up 15.8 points a game. Ironically enough, the exact same number the Bills' uh, 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 defense is giving up. It's going to be an old-school smash-mouth football game. I like the under, guys. Up next, Sunday night football. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Indianapolis Colts. Colts lost at home last week to Oakland. Our big-time dogs against Kansas City on Sunday night. But, Gabe... 
You're buying the Indy bounce back. Well, I tell you what, exactly. And you know, one of the reasons why I like the the over in the Minnesota Viking game is because we're getting a very low number. Uh, I tell you what, Wall Street is right down the street uh, from us. And you know, I'm not a finance major, but I understand about uh, buying low and selling high. We're getting to buy low right now on the Indianapolis Colts. They're getting just a little bit healthier. Keep your eye on T.Y. Hilton in this spot. They got a bye week coming up, so it'll be interesting to see whether they take the cautious uh, route. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I think they're going to be able to trade points uh, with the Kansas City uh, Chiefs. Just a few too many points when we get into the double-digitness uh, of this. Um, you know you know that Frank Reich's going to have a game plan put in place to be able to chew up a little bit of clock uh, here. And the fact of the matter is, um, the Ch- Colts' offense has been fine. Uh, the fact is, they haven't had any luck, pardon the punt, on the defensive side of the football. Offensively, the Colts are putting up 23.5 points a, a football game. Problem is, they're giving up 25 and a half points and 25 is the key here guys because the Kansas City Chiefs have scored 25 or more points in 25 straight games an NFL record so we almost have a starting point here don't we well we know the Chiefs are going to get to 25 yeah the Chiefs are probably going to get to more than 25 aren't they Chiefs are probably going to get to what 34 37 and therefore we're not really not asking for all that much to go over uh, the 56 in a track meet of a football game in which uh, both teams go back and forth. I want the double digit points. I think the game goes over the 56 as well. So give me the Colts plus the 11 and over 56, guys. A lot of points are going to be scored, as they always are when Patrick Mahomes takes the field. This week against Indianapolis, we'll see if Jacoby Brissett leading the league in touchdown passes can do his job. Brissett just needs to hang in there to cover a massive, massive spread. A lot of points are going to be scored in this one, as they always are when Patrick Mahomes takes the field. It's the other side that we're concerned about. Can Jacoby Brissett, who's near the league leaders in touchdown passes, do his job? That's a question that remains to be seen. But 11 points, it's a large number. All the Colts have to do is survive and, of course, do their part to go over. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up Game. It's been a blast. Let's keep winning. May the winners be yours. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the games. Gabe and I will be back on Monday to preview Monday Night Football.